Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net and shareholder of Helios and Matheson. And welcome to the first new episode of a new show I'm going to do called um, Announcing the Ratings or maybe the MPAA this week. I haven't completely decided yet, but this is a show where we are going to look at what the MPAA has received, what they have given it and what they have given it for. And just based on very, very basic information that I have on the movies, whether or not that rating is warranted. So this is a series I've wanted to start for a while. Thank you for joining me on the first episode. Let's get started. And the first movie that got rated this week was The Hummingbird Project. I don't know anything about it. It is classified as a comedy slash drama, and it looks to be starring Mark Zuckerberg, or at least the guy who played him. His name's Jesse Eisenberg. I know who it is. So I don't know much about this movie. I don't know the synopsis or anything, but it's been rated R for language throughout. So The Hummingbird Project, if you are under 17, you're going to need a parent or legal guardian. Another movie that got rated this week was called The Five Feet Apart. I don't know much about this one, but from the poster, it looks to be a teenage angsty drama of some sort. Um, maybe one of the kids is sick, who knows, but I've probably seen a movie like this before, and these movies always kind of sink or swim on how well it's told. Like, you know, you could have one movie that has the premise and it could be complete garbage. And then you could have another movie with the same premise, but it can be a masterpiece. Well, this movie has received a PG-13 rating for thematic elements, language, and suggestive material. Which, even though I don't know much about the movie, a PG-13 seems about right for a movie like this. Also rated this week, and this and the next movie we're talking about probably qualifies for the, it's a probably G-rated movie when you get down to it, is The Lego Movie, the second part. Is that was called? The Lego Movie 2, the second part. I am sorry. That has been rated PG for some mild, rude humor. I mean, mild, rude humor. I remember when Rugrat movies got G ratings where they had babies peeing in the air, pooping, talking about diapers, burping, and this was like, yeah, it's all kid stuff. Now you do that even just a wee bit and you get a PG-4 rude humor. It's ridiculous. I don't know any parent who objected to the original Lego movie. I doubt any parent's going to object to this one. For that matter, I don't necessarily see them objecting to this movie called Arctic Dogs. I'm not 100% what it's about. It, I've never heard of this one. It looks like one of those cheap third party or B animated movies that you see once in a while from players who it's like, oh, let's um, let's do animation. We can do animation like Disney and Blue Sky. I mean, I, I kind of call it the Ice Age syndrome where it's like, <laughs> if Ice Age can be a hit, then we can be a hit. Well, they got a PG rating for some mild action and rude humor. So they have a little action in a side from the rude humor. So... There you go. But what's really going to make these ratings seem a little silly in comparison is the final movie that we got rated. And movies like this are why we're going to be making this show. And that movie is Dragon Ball Super Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan that was created exclusively in a Dragon Ball Z movie spinoff is going to be returning and this time he will be canon. And there's a few reasons why I'm especially fascinated by the rating of Dragon Ball because Dragon Ball has been around for a long, long time. And Dragon Ball makes enough money that in theory, Funimation could have been getting ratings for these movies as m for many, many years. And I don't know entirely why. I know that there's like $3,000 to get the movie rated or something like that. And you know, when you're an independent production company, you don't normally want to spend that. But I've always suspected that Funimation kind of holds back on getting theatrical movies rated if they suspect they're going to get a rating that they don't want. So, for example, when they released the first Neon Genesis Evangelion remake movie, they submitted it and they got a PG-13 officially. However, the next movie they got was considerably darker and more violent, so they foregoed the rating altogether and they list it as TV-14 and even went back to the first movie and called that TV-14. Although I have one of the Blu-ray copies that actually has the rating on it. For that matter, one of the One Piece movies they rated, they got a PG-13, and then others, they've just been putting TV-14 on there. Now, Dragon Ball is interesting because before they started getting ratings, they would always put TV-14. This is the TV-14 
rated movie because it's uncut and stuff. And yet every single time they have gotten a rating for Dragon Ball Z or any of their products, it's been PG. They actually got one of the original Dragon Ball Z movies rated. It was rated PG. They got the Dragon Ball Evolution movie came out. It was rated PG. And so Dragon Ball Super Broly, um, that's what it's called, right? Dragon Ball Super Broly, yeah. That has been rated PG for prolonged frantic sequences of action and violence and for language. The irony of this movie getting a PG rating the same week as the Lego movie to the second part is quite obvious. Parents are clearly not going to have an issue with the Lego movie 2. They just aren't. They're, they probably won't even realize it's rated PG. And yet, it shares the same rating with Dragon Ball Super Broly, which does have violence, which does have language. It probably even has a couple of sexual jokes in there, and it shares the same parental guidance rating. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's going to be fascinating to be contrasting and comparing all these ratings to see really where the MPAA just throws it. Because if Dragon Ball's Broly Super is rated PG, then the Lego Movie 2 and probably Arctic Dogs should be rated G. I'm sorry, they just should. And it's going to be interesting to see how much more Funimation goes after ratings. Because Funimation's been getting into the rating games a little bit more these days. Um, they released The Boy and the Beast, and interestingly, that movie got a PG-13. I thought it was going to be a PG, but, you know, whatever. And they got... Your Name Rated, I thought that'd be a PG-13, it got a PG. So I don't even know if the MPA knows how to properly rate anime, but who knows, we're gonna have to see. But anyway, what do you think of all these ratings? Do you agree with any of them? Do you disagree? I would love to know. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you enjoy my videos, consider becoming a Patreon member. It's totally optional, but even as little as $1 a month goes a long way to helping this channel run smoothly, and you'll get access to my exclusive Patrons-only blog. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.